Hey guys and girls, how are you doing? Alright, I'm back again with another tutorial and this time around I'm talking about I think one of the most uh, underrated features of ZBrush according to me. Alright, um, and it's called using mannequins. Now for those who don't know, mannequins are part of ZBrush. If you go to your light box and under project you will find a folder for mannequins and when you get into that um, you will realize that there is a few presets that you can use now mannequins are cool if you are pretty much pressed for time and you want something that is more or less proportional and you know you don't have time to plot out your characters and you are working natively in zbrush then you know you can just grab a quick one and begin fleshing it out or for those who like to sculpt in pose without symmetry turned on then you can do the same as well and a few of you guys are wondering how do i go about you know building my own customized mannequins and this tutorial is to show you guys exactly how to do that all right so let's begin with step one see where it says a simple brush i'm just going to click on that and then select z sphere then i'm going to draw my z sphere out and switch to edit mode then i'm going to hit x so that i have a mirrored function happening and now what i'm going to do is to draw out my torso so I want to have the floor on while I'm doing that as well. And what's nice about this is that the floor automatically snaps when you are working on your, on your character. So I just want to see which um, axes I'm looking at. And I am going to just make it slightly taller. And then I'm going to hit my draw function again and just begin to plot things out. So I'm just switching between my Q and W button, which is my draw and my move uh, function. And this is what I have so far. So now I'm just going to, I'm just going to hold these points in between other so when when you bring them on top of each other like this your two points it becomes green and this means that you can plot in just one z sphere so now i'm just gonna move it down like so and then i'm gonna proceed to to create the pelvic area and then just draw the legs from there then I have the knee joint. And I can make this slightly longer. There we go. And then I'm just going to have one for the for the hand. So this is what my hand is going to look like. And then I'm just going to drag this down ever so slightly. Maybe bring it up a little bit more. There we go. I'm not looking at um, size relations yet. You are welcome to do so in this early stage. That is also fine. And then now I'm just going to start tapering these ends off even here. Same thing. And there we go. So I'm gonna add the neck and then add the head as well. Just bring it a little bit lower like this and then this is where my neck comes in and then this is where the head is going to be. Cool, I can still Maybe make the knees slightly bigger, make this, the thighs slightly bigger as well. Maybe drop the shoulders a little bit more. Uh, there we 
go. There we go. And there. Awesome. So now, what I'm going to do is see where it says Polymesh 3D. Just going to click on that. And in my sub tool options, I'm going to insert a sphere, a sphere in there. So it's like a sphere in a cylinder had a baby. So, so I'm going to insert that. And I'm just going to do a few tests to see what happens. So I'm going to go back here. And then in my adaptive skin uh, sub palette, I'm going to switch on use classic skinning. So with that on, now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to switch to my move function so that whenever I tap on these joints, I don't add any mesh to them. So let's start here. And then I'm going to say insert connector mesh. And then I'm going to select my sphere in there. And this is what I get. So this is a bit of an issue because the orientation is incorrect. So now I'm just going to undo this and then go to my sphere in there. And I'm just going to rotate it negative 90 degrees on the Y axis. So if your Y is up there, I'm just going to rotate it like so. And then I'm going to go back and then see if that has made a difference. So switch to move again. Select my joint. Use classic skinning. Insert connector mesh. And then I still have that issue. So now I'm going to go back and then rotate it once again. 90 degrees facing me. Go back again. Make sure that I'm on move and in adaptive skin, use classic skinning. Once again, uh, I'm just going to pick on this one and then insert connector mesh. And there we go. So the orientation does matter. All right. So depending on which version of ZBrush you're using or what were you doing before you decided to create this, your orientations and your axes might be um, a bit wonky for this to work. So you need to fiddle around with that just a little bit. So now I'm going to back here and it's pretty much rinse and repeat um, the same action. There we go. Now I'm going to do the same for the pelvic area. And do the same for the thighs and the lower leg as well as the foot. And then here as well. So this one here, this one here, and this one. Cool. So you'll notice that I didn't pick on the root. Alright, and the root is like the first sphere that I plotted in. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select it and then I just need to call in a sphere. So I'm going to go insert sphere 3D. And then I'm going to go back to my Z sphere 1. So with this selected, let's do this. So this selected, I'm just going to go to my adaptive skin. Once again, now I'm going to say insert local mesh. And then I navigate to the sphere. And this is what I have now. So this is cool because we can still move it around. Now we get a really nice feel of what our character is close to looking like. 
Alright, and we can still make the limbs longer, we can still make the limbs shorter, we can still play with proportions. Alright, so in the next uh, part, I'm going to show you how to even tweak these parts a little bit more so that you have um, a mannequin that really, really, really um, starts to read nicely. All right, now I'm going to show you guys how you go about tweaking um, your your shapes that you have called in when you are skinning your mannequin, so that you don't have this um, uniform length. You know, you have a little bit of tapering that happens. So what I'm going to do now is with my mask tool selected, um, let me just do this. And I'm just going to switch it around and smooth it a little bit. What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to just drag this up here and I'm just going to scale it down a little bit and then sort of pull it forward um, like how you would get a joint. So I'm only going to do one because the video is long enough as it is. Um, where can we place it? All right, so I'm going to say I move. Let's assume we want some definition with the forearm, meaning that it starts out thick or more or less um, the same width. And then as it nears its end, it sort of tapers into the joint. So with my adaptive skin selected, I'm just going to go to insert connector mesh. And as you can see, it's already updated. And now we have something like that. So this is cool because you can have multiple joints. Uh, maybe you want something very specific to the thigh. Maybe you want something very specific um, to the lower leg as well. You can pretty much just go in and do it. And if you still want to have uh, freedom of choice, you can still duplicate these guys and then just pretty much um, undo what you did at the top. So, let me just fix this off. There we go. So you can still have the original mesh and then you have the mesh which you have tweaked and have called in here. So thank you guys for checking out this video. This really helps me a lot when I am doing my work. Um, most of the work I post is on Instagram. So you can check me out at Azaria Art on Instagram. Um, there should be a link in the description. If you are seeing this on Facebook, um, then you're almost probably seeing it through my personal account or through my um, Facebook page. So once again, thank you guys for checking out the video and yeah, happy sculpting.